I woke up super excited this morning. I was gonna get the Falcon out and get the rates up and get the tune in this thing. And me and my buddy Adam, we were gonna go fly together. And we got there and it started raining. So, go figure. And some water droplets got in this. So hopefully it's hopefully it's perfectly fine. But no stuff on the Falcon today. Damn it. So the VTX of the Racer 250 is, is unique in that it actually gets a voltage feed directly pretty much from the LiPo battery. There's nothing in between it. There's not a BEC, nothing of the sort. And then on the power distribution board for the Racer, it actually has capacitors between the battery and the ESC to prevent feedback from happening to prevent you know the VTX from getting messed up. However, Couple things that we do know. VTX gets really, really hot. Um, so, that being said, how hot is too hot? Hi, kitty. Yes, this is why you normally go inside when I record. Um, how hot is too hot? And does this thing like self implode? Does it burn itself up? I, I don't want to burn this one up. I have two. I, to be honest with the reception I get on the other one, I suspect it's burned up. So that's why I don't want to burn this one up. And what I'm debating on doing is actually putting a little three gram heat sink on it. So today we're having an experiment. What we're going to do is we're going to plug in a 3S battery and run it for about 10 minutes and see how hot the VTX gets. And then we're going to do the same with the 4S battery. Because for those who don't know, a 3S battery is 11.1 volts. Now, most VTXs either run off the 12 volt BEC or in some cases the 5 volt. So, I'm concerned that when you go to a 4S and you plug 14 volts into this, that giving it more voltage is giving it uh, more power it has to dissipate and actually compounding the heating problems. So the end question is, will 4S batteries shorten the life of your VXT on the Racer 250? And can putting a heat sink on it extend its life at the expense of another three grams in an already heavy quadcopter? That's what we're going to do. So, like I said, I'm going to run a 3S battery for 10 minutes. I'm going to let the VTX cool down to room temperature again, and I'm going to run a 4X battery for 10 minutes. And I'm gonna keep track of the temperature. I just have an infrared thermometer. I don't have anything more accurate than that that I could put on there. But hopefully it'll be accurate to determine um, whether or not, you know, a 4S can be harmful for it. And then as well as if the heat sink is helping to dissipate the heat. If the VTX reaches 60 degrees Celsius, um, I'm going to pull the plug at that point and then I'll just mark how long it took to reach 60 degrees Celsius. Because typically, and I'm just going by CPU numbers, with a CPU and a computer, 60 degrees is the absolute maximum temperature you really want to run at for extended periods of time. Generally, something like 55, it's considered much better. So, uh, 60 is going to be the limit that I will allow it to hit. And yes, that, that will be it. So... Off we go. I was going to record the entire thing. Instead, I think I will do a series of graphs and a recap. So, there's the test bench right there. Oh, did the channel get off? Okay, so that was a very interesting series of tests. Before we look at the same graph, I just want to throw the reminder that the end of the test was basically either 10 minutes, which could be considered an average flight time, or 60 degrees, which could be considered like, like the upper limit of what chips should be allowed to run at. Now, when we look at the first graph, what we find is that without a heat sink, um, and just by default, 60 degrees gets reached very quickly. And 
also of note is that it's reached even quicker with a 4S battery in the higher voltage. So that is a concern, um, especially if you plan on doing a lot of 4S flying, if that uh, flying with this VTX and the 4X can actually damage it in the end. So then it's as I said, what I did is I stuck a little three gram heat sink on it, ran the same exact test, and these are the results. And as you can see, it's considerably better with a 3S battery uh, that was the only test that went the full 10 minutes and it was pretty well at 60 at the, the end of the test so um, It's good to know that 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 heat sink actually did make a difference with the 4s What I found is that it actually took a little bit longer to heat up and so I'm assuming what actually happened is when I tested it with the 3s the the thermal double-sided tape that's on the bottom of the heat sink actually kind of worked its way into place and was more efficient on the second round so um very interesting test and i'm actually glad i did it i personally have decided that i'm not going to run this vtx without the heat sink on it and i'm actually concerned if that's what burned out my first vtx and that's why the range is so poor it still works but has very poor range i'm actually curious if that's why now so I did not do a rain or a range test. It is raining outside, so I could not tell if the signal was degrading as it got hotter. I would have liked to have been able to do that. Um, and then also I have the problem of I still haven't done the official first flight with the Racer 250, which is supposed to be an ex stock configuration. So I think for the first flight, since I already had the heat sink on here, it's not going to fit there with the heat sink. I will actually use my old VTX. Um, same VTX, it's a 250, so shouldn't be any problems. And then um, I will walk through modding this. So my, my end of the day tips is A, if you can get a little heat sink for your VTX, please do so. Um, I, think, I think it's going to extend the life of this thing by a great deal. And number two is I would honestly do the mod to where you move your VTX off the top plate and put it in the back as soon as you can. Because in the back back here, when it's not sandwiched underneath that top carbon fiber plate, it should actually get a lot more airflow, which will hopefully help keep it cool in flight. And then number three, and finally, is if you're working on your racer and for some reason you have the battery plugged in, uh, say you're calibrating ESCs or you're testing motor direction or anything like that, I would honestly consider just unplugging the VTX. Um, that way if it is plugged in for an extended amount of time while it's on the bench, you're not overheating it with no airflow. Because keep in mind, these tests were actually done sitting on my desk with no airflow. But again, it's also cool and rainy, so if you're flying this in the desert, it might heat up even quicker. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. I know it's an interesting topic. I want to cover more of these uh, hypothetical situations and other things like that uh, to hopefully help people out. If there's any topics that you would like me to cover, please leave them in the comments below. I, I do read them, I do respond, and if it's something that I know about or I can learn about to share, I will definitely do that. Again, this is Lazy PC, signing off. You have a good one.